Welcome to our homestead. We use a ton of different tools out here on our homestead property and a push mower is one of them. Today we're going to take a look at my Toro 60 volt battery powered recycler lawnmower. See how it works, see how the longevity is and if it's an intelligent buy for a homestead. So over the past few days, we've done a lot of mowing with this mower. It's performed very well. I do not remember the model number, so it's right here at the bottom of the screen. Let me show you what we've done with the mower. We have used it with two different batteries. Now we have the Toro blower and all of the batteries are interchangeable between all of Toro's battery powered options. That battery is a two and a half amp hour battery. And you can see right here, it cuts very well and the runtime on it was pretty impressive, about 14 and a half minutes. Now I'm going through fairly thick grass here and if you're in a suburban type situation, it's gonna be more than enough to handle anything that your uh, suburban property has on it, any type of grass. Out here I have a mixture of grasses and there's some very tough uh, bahia or bahia hay grasses. So that would slow the motor down some, but this thing didn't skip a beat. So before I talk about the performance and the testing on this, I want to talk about the features of it because they, Toro seems to be upgrading this continuously over the past year or so since they released it it's changed and gone through a lot of different iterations. And I believe it's because they are very good at listening to their customers. So for me, I'm also gonna suggest a few changes for them because they are kind of old school and a little bit annoying. And I know a lot of the uh, dedicated electric or battery powered mowers out there like the Ego have features that work just a lot better than some of the features on this. So here's the first thing that I would like to see a different design for, and I know they're smart enough in their design team to do this, and that is the way that your height is adjusted here. These have been around for like 70 years. They catch on a whole ton of stuff, especially if I'm going under uh, delicate uh, plants trying to mow the grass around and underneath them. Hey, catch. I pulled out a fig branch the other day with fruit on it. Please think of something better for that. Now this deck, I'm gonna have to check and I'll put it at the bottom of the screen, whether or not this is cast aluminum. It feels like it, it's very light to push around. Now I know the original models had the uh, steel deck. And unlike most of the other battery powered um, companies have plastic decks. So this was a steel deck before and now it feels like cast aluminum. It's very nice, it's very light and it works really well. This is pretty cool, it has headlights on it. So I don't know if these are light sensitive. I couldn't tell when they turned on. Um, for when I turn the battery right on, if they're running right away or if it has a light sensor in there and it, uh, it senses the dusk and turns on when the sun is going down. So for this particular model, it's really easy to take out the, uh, the mulching plug or the recycler plug that's in here and it, it just pushes in and out and pulls right out. Some of the upgraded models, I believe, had a switch right here on this portion of the mower that you could flip up the, the mulching plug and flip it back down again. But this one doesn't have it. It's probably just a model number issue. Here's something that they changed from previous models is that it used to have just a cover that came off and now it's this spring-loaded and geared door right here. It works okay, it seems a little delicate, and I bumped a few things with it on my, when I was mowing, and it just popped right up. So, I don't know if this is the best design. It's nice. So Toro, I believe, listened to their customers and looked at their competitors. They used to have a six amp hour battery in the first iteration of this, and now they have a seven and a half amp hour battery. We used it, on the max setting, so the max power setting the entire time for both the two and a half and the seven and a half amp hour batteries, I got over 55 minutes of cut time with the seven and a half amp hour battery through various lengths of grass. This mower does have an auto 
feature and auto sensing feature. So if it senses lighter grass, it will power down a little bit. And when it senses heavier grass or thicker grass, it pushes more power to the blade, and thus obviously using more power. But since I wanted a consistent test, I use it on the max setting the entire time. The only place I found the power a little lacking was in the self-pushing or self-propel mechanism. And out here we're really sandy and it just doesn't have that push to it that a gas-powered mower does. However, it is so light that I never had a problem pushing it anywhere. So I guess that kind of balances itself out and it was really not that big of a deal for me. I just wanted to mention that it was a little underpowered in its self-propel motion. But if you're on a suburban property, then it's not really gonna matter at all. The wheels on it are great. I love the fact that they are taller in the back. It makes going through some little bit thicker grass and uphills a little bit easier. And the personal pace, auto drive, it takes a second to get used to, but it's really easy to learn. And I really liked the feature. You just kind of push it forward and the more you want to go forward or the faster, the harder you push it forward and it's going to go. And it was, it performed really well. I think there's one little adjustment on it that I can make that'll make it a little bit stiffer because it did seem a touch bit loose, but that's probably just that really quick adjustment and it'll be perfect. So is this better than my gas mower? Well, I can tell you this Craftsman made in the USA of global parts mower over here is one year old and it already does not work. And here's why. So modern ethanol gases really gum up the carburetor parts in these little small engines really, really easily. And that is the issue with it already. This thing, I, it's, it's incredibly annoying. All the parts in the carburetor are plastic. I still haven't cleaned it out or gotten the gunk out of it so far uh, to be able to get it started again. And it's one year old. I think I used it five times last year. That's it, it's already gummed up. Now that's not to say that something couldn't happen with this battery machine over here. However, the cut time that I got out of it is really good. It was way more than enough that I need on the property because I don't normally cut for more than 10 minutes. There are only a few places where I need this and that's in tight places like my grape enclosure, underneath the solar panels, right up next to the house where my zero turn doesn't reach and inside of the chicken coop around the electric fencing which is where you need to keep it low. Okay, so obviously gas is really expensive. And if I was to put the non-ethanol gas in this, which around me right now, I'm in Texas and gas prices are coming down, it's still 480 a gallon. So that doesn't take much. It's got maybe what, a half a gallon or a third gallon tank on it. And it's obvious, I obviously don't use the entire tank, but it's expensive at, compared to the way it used to be. This battery powered mower, I can charge off of my solar, which essentially is free. So the argument is always, well, the battery is gonna wear out fast. Well, let me tell you about the testing that was done on this seven and a half amp hour battery. It's stated by all the manufacturers, but there's a uh, website, Pro Tools Review, that did the charging and uh, testing of a lot of different batteries, and the Toro, is good for a thousand discharges from full to zero. So if you're cutting your grass every single day, that's gonna last you about three years. And obviously batteries degrade over time, but you're not going to cut your grass every single day. Maybe once a week, twice a week, depending, especially if you're out on your homestead. So that battery should last six or seven years. Now, it remains to be seen whether the longevity of the internal electronics can match a gasoline small engine. But already it's beating it because the carburetor is all gummed up. The plastic carburetor is all gummed up. And the cost for me to charge this on my solar is zero, and obviously the gas costs more than that. So if you're out on a country property and you have a solar system, even if you don't, this may be the better choice. Now, I'm not a huge proponent for everything being electric, but I think this is one tool that it has an advantage for having a battery in it. 
And before you make a comment about the environmental issue about it, for me, that's not a factor at all. The only issue that would arise is if you've got a larger area where you would need to mow and mow continuously. And this one will give you 55 minutes through decently tough grass and then you're going to be charging it for two hours after that. So you'd have a two hour break if you mowed over that. But for me, I mowed darn near an acre with it in those 55 minutes because it is fairly fast. It's light and it moves quick. If you're mowing more than an acre with a push mower, you should probably think about investing in a zero turn. So at the end of the day, the investment in the battery powered has advantages over the gas powered if you are thinking about getting one of these for your property. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which is our review of our Toro Titan Max 60 inch zero turn mower. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.